the Prime Directive. March 2017 Beloved one, you have had some changes going on recently in the collective consciousness, the collective of this geopolitical grouping and other geopolitical groupings around the world. This geopolitical grouping, as it extends to the world mindset, has been quite active. You have been finding a bit of a challenge from time to time to take it all in and to wonder about it, and truly I have seen you following my advice, to take the seat in the front row to watch the drama on the stage until and unless you feel other guidance. You have bought the seats in the front row, and it is for your enjoyment, to be in joy with it. Because, as you will remember, you create your reality, and you will call it what you will call it. In truth, nothing can come nigh your dwelling place that is not good. Every time you have the separated ego running on stage and saying, but master, what about? Am I going to be without the golden coins? Am I going to have restrictions upon what I can do, etc.? You take the deep breath and say, no, separated ego, it is okay. I, capital I, am in charge, and I decree that everything works as a blessing to me. So then you take the deep breath and sit in your seat and watch what is going on. If someone comes to you and wants to have a discussion with you, you come from a place of wholeness, a place of allness. You look at the whole of what is happening, and you know that truly nothing can hurt you. Nothing can interrupt the awakening, the atonement. In fact, what is happening on your national stage is bringing about the most wondrous recipe for the awakening. And I say that in all truth, not as a joke, although sometimes it is good to have joy and laughter. In truth, you are going to look back upon this time and see how the various parts have come together to aid the awakening. So allow yourself to abide in peace. Yes, you will have discernment and say, hmm. Some of these things don't look like they're going to lead to the most healing, at least not short term. It is okay. You can say, I can't wait to see how this is all going to work out, because it will. You know that. Already you know it is going to work out. No matter how it looks at any immediate instant, it is going to work out for the at And then you will say, yes, I did hear that. I wasn't quite sure about it. But you know, it really has come to pass. Everything that you see upon the stage has come to pass. So watch it, enjoy it, abide in peace, knowing who holds the future. When ones come to you very upset about something, take their hands, first of all, and say, breathe with me. Yes but. Breathe. Then you do the most healing thing, the hug. Then you sit down and say, okay. Now tell me what is going on. If they get all upset again, you take their hand and say, let us breathe together. It is a miracle what the deep breath can do. You meet them in love. You listen to them. Because truly they are in a place of great fear, and you know, and you reassure them that it has come to pass. So you laugh and say, okay, let us look perhaps a few years down the road. How do you see yourself? Well, I don't know. That's the problem. Okay, how would you like to see yourself? Well, I'd like to see myself with enough golden coins to be comfortable and to be able to do what I need to do and go places. Okay, you will have it. Well, how do you know, they'll say. And you will just say, I know. Because truly you have lived enough lifetimes that you have seen enough things come to pass. You for yourself, will stand in strength, because you know from previous experiences that everything, no matter how bad it might look in one instant, has come to pass. So you breathe, you smile, you hold hands, and you say, it is okay. I know. I have it on good authority that it is going to be okay, and it is. You will have fun with it, believe it or not. And even the ones who are wringing their hands and wondering what is going to become of them, they are going to be okay. Now, I know there are friends that you have who make a habit of worrying, a habit of living in fear, a habit of judging. But when you hold their hands and you breathe together for a moment or so, they have to let go of the tension, because you are not going to let go of their hands until they do let go of some of the heavy that they are carrying, 
until they breathe and feel the body relaxing a bit. Yes, the worries may be still there, but they will be letting some of it go. So you hold their hands and you breathe together. When they reach a place of peace, and it may not happen right away, but it will happen, you speak to them. You know, I have this funny idea. I'm kind of sitting back. I'm in the front row watching this play going on. Oh, but it's not a play. Everything's going to wreck and ruin. But yes, you know, when I watch it, sometimes it's like some of the dramas that we watch on the big screen. Yes, but I'm right in it. Maybe you don't have to be. You can make suggestions to them so that they can step back for a moment or so. Maybe it is not anything they ever thought they could do. A new idea. What? You mean I don't have to worry? I don't have to solve this? No, it has come to pass, and it will. So be of good cheer, because there is a saying that you have in this world, and it is a very good saying, I may not know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. The Christ of you holds the future. So you will remember that. Maybe pass it on as it is needed. Sometimes ones do not even need the words. They only need the hug, the smile that says, I will listen to you. I know how you feel. It is okay. And then as they have been in the storm, they see it pass. You have been there yourself. Sometimes you just need to talk it out, and then you are finished. I would advise that you let ones get it out, because if you try too soon to interject a new idea into it, you will stop the process. What is needed is for them to be able to express, get it out, and then there will be a little space where maybe something new can come in. That is why you are here. That is why you have volunteered to be here at this time. The larger self of you knew that these years are going to be growing years, years of the atonement, the atonement. You knew before you signed up that truly it was a time of awakening, and you said, Oh, I want to be there for that. I want to see everyone awaken. Well, you maybe did not know that they were going to come through the nightmares first, and when you have been in the midst of nightmares, you have said, Oh, I want out. This isn't what I bargained for. This isn't what I thought I was signing up for. And then you take the deep breath and remember that everything has come to pass. So now we are going to take those ideas a little bit further because there is something most important for the consciousness to remember. It is what I am going to call the Prime Directive. Now, you have that term. You have seen that in your dramas upon the big screen in a portrayal called Star Trek. In a galaxy far, far away and a long time ago, which in truth, yes, you can say it happened a long time ago, and it is about to happen again. There was a prime directive, but that is not the prime directive that I am going to be speaking of now. What I am speaking of is something that has been from before time, and it is the prime directive of your life, every lifetime that you have had. It is the directive to live in love, to spread love, to be in love. To be in love with life, to be in love with brothers and sisters, with the four-footed ones, with all of life in any of its forms, to be in love and to extend love. That is the prime directive that has been from before time was created. It is, in truth, the soil from which you have sprung. Love was before any of your creations. You have said, I'm going to play with my creations in this sandbox. I'm going to play with the brothers and sisters in a certain drama. And the Prime Directive said yes. It always says yes, because love always allows. But as it is allowing, it also has a companion, and that Prime Directive comes with the companion of joy, of happiness, of okayness, whatever descriptive term you want to use, a light heart. The Prime Directive always comes with a light heart. Because truly, when you are in love, everything has to fall into place to serve love itself. That prime directive is what allows you to know that you are playing within a drama of another sort. Love birthed you, as you said, I want to experience. I want to express. I want to express that which I am in all of its myriad forms and creations. That is what you have said from the very beginning, and that is what you are doing throughout every experience. 
you are expressing, in one way or another, the prime directive, because you would not be doing what you are doing without love allowing you. So it behooves you from time to time to check in and say, okay, I am the forward point of the prime directive interacting with and in my creations. I am the prime directive interacting in and through all of my creations. Because truly, you are. Even the creations that you would say, oh, that can't be good. That can't have a good outcome. And yet when you have finished a lifetime, and hear this well, when you have finished a lifetime, you have opportunity to view it from the place of prime directive and to behold everything that you did and to call it good. You have space, opportunity to look upon everything. You have ones who have had what are called the NDE, the near-death experience. Well, it is a death experience, and then they have come back to talk about it, and they share with you how it was, how they had a chance to look at what was happening, what they were doing, and what others were doing, and how they have seen it differently than what they saw before the cessation of the bodily energy activity. The ones who have come back to talk about it are not finished. They know themselves not to be finished with the experience, so they come back to tell you about it. For the most part, there is a general agreement, a general thread of experience that runs through every account that ones make. The main thing that they will remember is that life is good. They often come back feeling that whatever it was that was troubling them was actually a gift, and they are here to share, to share from the prime directive of love. You know the feeling of love. All of you reading these words, you know what it feels like to fall in love, to be so immersed in love that that is all you see and feel. Maybe it comes and goes very quickly. Maybe it lasts for a lifetime. But you know the feeling of total, complete love. You have known that, and it is why you have volunteered to be here, even though there is a certain forgetfulness that happens when you take on the physical form. Not always. And in truth. In the very beginning for some time period of months, perhaps years, you still remember love, and that is why oftentimes the small ones will say, I want to go home. This is not home. Because they remember love. They remember the home that is total and complete love. So the small ones will say to you oftentimes, I don't want to be here. Why am I here? Because at that point the soul has forgotten that they have volunteered. You may go through years of growing up and say, I didn't volunteer for this. I wouldn't volunteer for this. And yet each and every soul that volunteers to take physical form has come as an emissary of love. Oftentimes it is because it is what they want to remember, and they come searching for it again. You know the space of love. You have been there. And then, because of the haphazardness of physical life, you think it has eluded you. And yet it is what you are. It is what you have to give. You have seen ones who may not have much of the physical tangible goods. They may be living the simplest life with not too much of the accoutrements of the world, but there is a simplicity about them, and they may be and oftentimes are happier than ones who have amassed for themselves a lot of the golden coins and a lot of the physical things, because they know what is truly important. They have not lost sight of it. Even the ones who are seemingly bereft of help, never can they be bereft of love. It is what has allowed them to come forth and to create. It is their very being, as it is your being. So you allow yourself to connect once again with the love that you are. Now, how do you do that? Big question. First of all, I suggest that you take some time in every day to connect with the love which has allowed you to be here. Take some time for meditation, the time to be quiet for a short space of time, for a short duration of focusing upon the greatest miracle of physical life, the breath. If you do nothing more in your meditative time, allow yourself to focus on the breath, breathing in and breathing out, breathing in and breathing out. Ideas will come to you that you need to be doing. Oh, I need to write so and so. Oh, I need to be calling so and so. I need to be. And you put those all off and say, I will come back to them later, and focus again on the breath, breathing in and breathing out. Simplicity itself. That is the discipline of it. Simplicity. After a while, it may not come right away. 
It might even take what you understand to be six months. Oh, my goodness, if I don't get it in the first 21 days, I failed. No. Keep breathing, I advise you. It is better for the body if you keep breathing. Allow yourself to focus on the breath, putting aside other ideas. Take some time for you. Not time to be running around composing something, figuring out what you have to do, where you have to be, what you are going to say to so and so, but just focusing on the breath and how healing the breath is. I guarantee that at some point you are going to feel loved. Oh, my goodness, where did that come from? I really feel okay. Then the little voice comes in and says, well, you're not okay. You have to do such and such, and you have to measure up, and so forth, and then you start breathing again, focusing on the breath. At first a little bit of feeling, hmm, maybe life is okay, will be perhaps fleeting, or not, but it grows. If you have the discipline, and you can have it, to keep on breathing and focusing on the breath, in time, within the structure of time, you will feel transported to a place of peace. Then right after you acknowledge that, it will probably disappear, but that is okay, because once you have touched that space, you know it to be real, and you know that you can come back to it. It may take another month or two before you experience it again. That is okay. Know that you have spent lifetimes doing nothing but sitting in the cave and breathing, sitting in the monastery and breathing. This lifetime you have created for yourself a myriad of distractions, because you are so creative. But you can put them aside for 10 minutes and breathe, focusing on the breath. Now, you are going to have fun with this, because the mind is going to come in there and want a structured, systematic thing to do. Just focusing on the breath is not enough, it is going to say to you. You have to have different steps that you achieve. You have to feel that you're making progress, and you have to have certain feedback that allows you to know that you're doing it right. If you are breathing, you are doing it right. If you are not breathing, you may ask for another lifetime to start over. Hopefully, you will not have to come to that point. Continue to breathe. Ones have often said, but Yeshua, Jesus, I need something that has an outline to it that will keep me knowing that I'm making some progress with this. I need to have a structured format so that I know I am doing it right. In truth, when you have a structured format, what are you serving? You are serving the mind because the mind wants to know. Enquiring minds, especially, want to know. Allow the mind to be silent for a short space of time. Focus on the breath. Focus on peace. Focus on love. Not the esoteric, abstract, how love has to be and how it looks and how it comes and goes, and all the attributes that you have given to love. Just focus on the space of allness, the space of isness, the space of love, the space where all you want is breath, and you breathe, and you feel peaceful. Then one say to me, but Jesus, that's not enough. I have to have goals. I have to have something to accomplish. So who is speaking? The mind, one more time. The mind is very tricky. The mind is very demanding in very slippery ways. Focus on the breath. Connect with the prime directive which has allowed you the beingness to breathe, breathing in and breathing out. It is simplicity itself. All of your great masters, the sages of all of the ages, all of the philosophers who have devised all of the techniques, have come in there searching back to the same point, where what they are experiencing is totality of being, the isness of love, the isness that has been from before time was created. Because time has been created, and that which has been created will come and pass. But the peace that you are, the love that you are, will abide forever, because it has been from before time. After you have come to the place that feels very empty and yet full, you go forward in that day to fulfill the prime directive of giving love to anyone and everyone, because you are so full of it that it overflows and has to be expressed. It is simplicity itself. Then the rest of the time of the day, if the mind comes to you and wants to be very busy, allow it, knowing that always with one deep breath, you can return again to the place of peace, the place of love. 
For the rest of the day you can run about doing what the mind directs, having fun, because that is why you have created the mind. It is to have fun, to investigate, to create, but remembering always your touchstone of the prime directive, the love which has given you birth, not only in the physical form, but in the form of going forward as the light being that you are, as the love being that you are. I guarantee it will change how you view everything in your world, everything about you. It is simplicity itself. It is easy, which is why the mind does not really care for it. The mind wants to go around in circles, but you are the center of the circle. You will find that after you have experienced the place of peace, focusing on the breath, you will watch the mind running around trying to put everything together, and there will be a big smile upon the face, because you are at peace, and you know that everything comes from love. So be it. Yeshua Ben Joseph, Jesus. Channeled through Judith Coates www.oakbridge.org